Republican Anthony Rogers has no previous political experience. Rogers, a comedian, is well known for a podcast called The Anthony Rogers Show. Hey man, this is Tommy Chong, and right now you're listening to The Anthony Rogers Show. Hey all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol Baskin, and you are listening to The Anthony Rogers Show. Hey y'all, this is Kevin from Counterbox, you are listening to the funny man Anthony Rogers. Hey, my name is Alex Sulkin, writer of TED and Family Guy, and you're listening to The Anthony Rogers Show. Lucky you. Yo, go to birdbites.com, the original oat and energy bites. It's a mother and son team, Deborah and Daniel Berg, make these amazing energy oat bites. Uh, get, the, get the almond butter and jelly, that's my favorite, or get whatever you want, I don't know. Uh, but these are made in America, so they're not made by child slaves like every other product out there. Um, they also are good for you health nuts. They have no gluten, no dairy, no soy, no GMOs. Go to BergBites.com. Get it going. Just step up your breakfast routine. Welcome back to the greatest show in the entire universe. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, NFTs. Today we have Alex Solis. How are you doing, man? Good, good. How are you? Good, man. Uh, for, like, first question, like, for people, like, and myself, like, kind of, like, I, I understand what NFT, like, mostly, but, like, what is an NFT? Like, to, like, a layman or somebody that, like, you know I mean, doesn't know, like, isn't in the industry as much as you are? Uh, I mean, think about as um, uh, skins on Fortnite is something that you, you, you own digitally and you truly own it. So you own kind of the certificate, the authentication of the art. And it's all digital. And, and a lot of times this NFTs come, come with utility and other physical items and stuff. So um, there's there's a lot more to it. But you just think of a collect, digital collectible you could truly own. That's, that's a really good way to put that. That's really good. You tell your smart guy, he's like, you dumbed that down like really well. I feel like, <laughs> like it made a lot of sense, you know. But uh, so like you make your own like art and stuff like that, too. Like you make a lot of like, uh, like, like how did you get into this? Like uh well initially i was really deep into the designer toy world uh where it kind of is physical collectibles and it just made sense for me to transfer into uh digital digital collectibles uh i do stuff like the giant statues you see behind me um a lot of uh, traditional uh, paintings and stuff as well but um nfts is just a way for me to use a lot of my digital content and have my supporters actually own this stuff and actually collect all their stuff in the future. So <laughs> that's crazy. Are you into the, um, like the, the real estate and like the metaverses or whatever they're doing right now? Like, are you into that shit yet? Uh, yeah, do I've been trying to push really heavy into that. Uh, once I found out that brands need this, the land to publish their content and I actually went in the one of them, the central land and started walking around and I'm, I've been really bullish and really trying to just collect land. And uh, I just think it's the future of how uh, social interaction, how you navigate the Internet in a more fun way. So I really I've been going in and trying to get a lot of land and more for my projects. And I, I just think it's a great investment as well for if you're trying to get in the space and actually make profit. <laughs> No, for sure. That's crazy to think about. I mean, yeah, you're right. I think it's going to go down to like one. I, I I don't know how it's going to go. You know, there's like a bunch of people fighting for it. And then you have like unofficial ones. Like, I mean, you have like, I mean, even like Fortnite's kind of a metaverse and you have like World of Warcraft and like a bunch of shit, like a bunch of, you have like a bunch of pockets and, and weird yeah. ones. And, and like, I mean, some of these are so well populated. They just change like two or three things. They could just be the internet. You know what I mean? No, it definitely is. It's so and crazy. Yeah. The way I do it is I just go in to see where the people are, right? Because you really want to be what this is, is kind of like brands, marketing and advertising. That's what the future of it is. So you really want to go in the ones that are really popular and where all the people are, because that's where the real value of having land and advertising your uh, brand or whatever you're advertising, right? Your podcast, anything. So I would say like Sandbox and I, I've been actively looking at new ones that are coming out because where the people are, that's where the advertising is. <laughs> Yeah, then that's what dictates it. The crowd, like, always dictates it. Like, it's like, it's like, how old are you? Uh, 38. 38, okay, but same generation. So it's like, it's like, it's like when, I'm like 35. Like, it's like whenever, um, like, uh, my, it went to, like, Facebook instead of MySpace. You know what I mean? Like, at any time, the crowd can just, like, dictate, like, something that necessarily wasn't even better. I think MySpace was better even, like, a better product even, but it went to Facebook. It was just weird. And, like, yeah. you, can see, you can see that going now. Like, you don't know where it's going to go yet. Same with like, cryptocurrency. It's like, you don't know which one's going to be dominant. I mean, you have an idea, 
of which mm-hmm. couple are going to be dominantly like Ethereum and like like Bitcoin seem to be. But I mean, yeah, <laughs> but a, I'm really I'm really bullish on Ethereum. I mean, obviously, uh, Bitcoin is it's a great asset to hold this because it's the original, and I feel like that'll never change. But Ethereum, uh, especially with E2 coming out, all the utility, all the NFTs being in the blockchain, um, you just got to look at the what what they actually do and what they're used for. And don't just jump into like doggy coins and uh, like you should really look into uh, what what they're doing. Like um, like with Ethereum, I um, I had the choice of doing my project on obviously like Solana or all the other ones that have lower gas fees, but I just think it's important to overall look at the projects and what they're doing. And Ethereum for me feels like it's just the chain to be on and that will eventually I'll I'll grow even Bitcoin and push it push past it. I think it already has in function. Like I just don't think it's I don't think people have accepted it and it's like a popular idea or like the way mm-hmm. you look at the way most people look at it. Because Bitcoin is the first one, so everyone's like, oh, it's just Bitcoin, you know. But I think Ethereum <laughs> probably has way more use, you know. Oh, dude, a hundred percent. I mean you wouldn't want to trade on Bitcoin just because the gas fee will be insane. Like but I, I still think Bitcoin is going to be always important, no matter there's going to be Ethereum 2, Ethereum 3 sure. and keep changing. But there's always going to be Bitcoin. So, uh, I mean, anyone that has a portfolio, I would always suggest have a little bit of Bitcoin just because it's the original, the, yeah. the one that's never going to change. No, I can see that, too. Yeah. Were you always into like like this, like like electronics and like uh, Internet and stuff or just something just came out later? Like when did you get into this? Like, uh, like I guess, um, the Internet culture? I guess... Um, <laughs> At one point, I, I really didn't think I was going to make a living from doing art. It just felt like that. You, you always hear like a starving artist, right? Like you're a starving artist. And I, that just got into my head. And like uh, I I got into uh, web development just because I was like, I, I love art. And I'm always going to keep doing art even if I didn't make money. But I just really got into web development to start as a career and still have a a way to do my art and design but it just kind of led to like me getting into javascript me being into uh seeing what tech is doing see how, seeing how i can use tech to elevate my artwork because i mean traditionally i love doing paintings and that's just me as an artist like i'm never gonna let go of like just painting and doing all that but uh i feel like if you understand the way tech is moving and and using it as a tool to elevate my art has been the push for how I got into crypto. It's always been my art and how it brought me into using this new tech. It's not, it's not just me being like, I need to make money and flip or uh, it's always been like, how can I use this new tech to enhance my art, to use this new tools, to um, interact with people, connect with everyone. And I don't know, now, now it's more about not just growing my bag and my value. It's about me uh, with my entities, hopefully, hopefully bringing value to my holders and people that support my work as well. That's awesome, man. Do you have more art around your place you can show us? Or like, what do you? Um, I, feel like I can bring it over here. Hold on a second. <laughs> a unique opportunity to have somebody like you on here. So I was just kind of wondering what you had going on. Like, so if you're watching on YouTube, like, uh, like you know, if you're listening, like you, you can't see anything. <laughs> if you're listening on audio streams. One second, I'll bring some stuff here. Cool, cool. So I, was just, I was skimming through art on like Instagram. This guy is like awesome. Like art, you should look him up on like Instagram and like uh, Google him and stuff, dude. Like I'll put some so links I in the description. Like a, uh, this is just like a, one of the paintings I did, and uh, recently I connected this with NFT, so I scanned this digitally. And That's then, awesome. It looks like the gorillas or something like that. Like band, like it looks like some art from like that band. Like it's cool, dude. I like that a lot. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, Yes, yeah, so I do a lot of that stuff. I do a lot of figures. Like this is a lot of the stuff I was doing before just NFTs. I was doing a lot of like. You made um, that? That's crazy. How'd you make that? What is that? Oh, uh, this is a poo. Yeah, it looks like that. I mean, what is it made out of? I mean, like, that's crazy. Oh, and this is made out of resin, but it's like electroplated. So I always try to like try new things and different stuff that, again, that I feel like would push my work to the next level. That looks awesome. That's crazy, man. You're a talented dude, like. Like I got this little guy from Mario and I asked you, Oh, that's crazy, dude. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, aside from that, I do a lot of like projects with clients. Like this one was for one piece, the anime um, show. And they hired me to 
make them chunky because I get a lot of like chunky figures. Uh, Dude, yeah, that's funny, one, man. Dude, one. that's crazy, man. I mean, actually, I don't, I don't know where it is right now, but <laughs> I mean, I hope I, I do a lot of like client work. I don't know if you heard of the rapper Takashi Six Nine with all the. So I bet I branded his whole look. I've been doing stuff for him for like two and a half years. So I do a lot of client work and I do a lot of my own work. And lately I just been pushing a lot into like NFTs and uh, eliminating client work actually. So <laughs> that's the game. Yeah. Like, like make more money, less work, you know, I got, <laughs> if it's not rude, like what, what, what does someone like you make? Like, like, what is your, what is your like net worth? If that's not like completely fucking crazy. Uh, ass <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to say like a number, but I could like, I'm financially free now that I could focus on just doing what I love and creating the work that I truly like. And uh, I mean, honestly, I could retire now, <laughs> but uh, it, what I really push for is like, what without art, I feel like, I don't know. I, I, I'm just not happy. So for me, it's, it's always like continue to push my art. It, like what money did for me was just like eliminate, uh, create a little more time for me to like get rid of clients and not just get rid of clients, but be able to focus more on like art that I really want to be passionate about making like stupid fat poo. <laughs> that's a great painting though. I, I, I know I like how you sum it up. Like, it looks fucking cool, man. Like, I mean, that's, thank you. That's all art has to do is like look awesome, really, or like, like be relevant, you know, like. Thank you. Yeah, no, sorry uh, if you hear a noise. It's my bird going crazy. I have you have a, a bird. bird too? What kind of bird do you have? <laughs> I have a sun, sun cheek conyard. What is that? What kind of, is that like a parrot or a parakeet or like what? It's like a parrot, but he's like a bigger one. It's like all orange or something. He's just crazy. Really I grew up with a parrot. I had a green parrot. Like a, it was like a, one of those green, it was like a green, I forgot what kind of bird it was, but it was like my parents, it was my parents. It wasn't mine, you know? Oh, awesome. But, yeah, I, we got them and then later on we looked it up. It was like the loudest bird you could get so it's just like fuck <laughs> now they're good at it being attention so you can get an attention man they're good at it man like that's what they're doing you know that's great thing. so uh what you're in new york i guess or what oh i'm uh i was in chicago and now i moved to uh wisconsin okay I'm you seem new york to me for some reason you seem you, I, I, you seem like you're new york and like dakashi's from new york so i didn't know if that's what like how you guys how'd you end up working with dakashi 69 i guess um i mean that was a very it's it's different because like what you see online is a little different than what you oh, get when sorry hold on one second let me show you. <laughs> all right sorry about that no, you're um, good dude it's funny. <laughs> it makes me laugh man it's funny uh, I mean, working with him is actually really professional. He there's an actual label that backs all his stuff up. Um, oh, it's huge, yeah. No, it makes sense. I mean, you got to be smart to get that big. I mean, yeah, and, uh, yeah. People, what what you see online is, I guess, a more of a bigger persona that they created, and uh, I feel like that's with every artist and musician, right? Like what you see online is a little disconnected than what they are in real life. But uh, working with him is, he's really professional. He knows what um kind of what he the moves he's making he's very strategic so um, i learned a lot just from <laughs> working with him i know he gets a lot of hate and stuff but i do appreciate the aspect of how he markets himself and and has been able to grow and i mean unfortunately he uses a lot of shock tactics that people are not that don't love but it it and nowadays it's it's what works and yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's a millions of people's goal to be famous and he's doing it. So, I mean, clearly he's doing something right, you know, about like, uh, I'm not, I mean, yo, without sponsors like the cushion at the cushion.com with this show just wouldn't exist. So on top of getting something awesome, like a weed nug, a pillow, uh, this is fucking cool. Honestly, just fucking cool. Um, get one, um, support the sponsors, uh, the cushion.com. Tell me Anthony sent you. I'm know. not sure if that's like the greatest goal, honestly, but that I don't personally align a hundred percent with his goals. Um, yeah, I yeah, but I, yeah. <laughs> no, I sure. wouldn't go that route, but I, I guess I appreciate the marketing side of it and what they're doing to an extent. Like that's crazy for your resume too. I mean, that's just good. That's just good. Because like, I mean, that's somebody everybody's heard of. So it's like, 
regardless of your opinion, I, I mean, that's somebody at top, like top of the game. I mean, that's, that's a good collab, man. Like, uh, you got, you have some great stuff, man. Like, I think people, where, where can people check it out? Stuff like, uh, like where should people go? I guess. I mean, I know loosely, but I mean, where, uh, mostly, uh, I, I usually post all my stuff on currently on Instagram, uh, Alex MDC. Um, but I, I've been pushing a lot of stuff more towards Discord and just because of uh, I've been pushing a lot with crypto and how it's decentralized. And now, I mean, uh, a lot of the Facebook stuff, right, is a little bit more regulated. Uh, they pushed a lot of regulations where they're controlling kind of what you see and and what kind of like right now my reach is like, even though I have uh, half a million followers, only reach like 2% of my following. And that's because. Instagram regulates the accounts and makes sure that they kind of dictate what you see. Uh, so a, a lot of stuff I've been pushing more towards Discord, where it's more of a decentralized network, right? Where people are just everyone that follows me can immediately see what their what my content versus now on Instagram they it doesn't show it unless you're searching for it, and it becomes a little harder to continue to market and push there. No, it's very true. I definitely noticed that in the last couple of years of the internet. Like, it's definitely, I mean, they just like shit. Like, I'm, I'm like the only verified Anthony Rogers on YouTube. And you search Anthony Rogers, like a pastor comes up. He's not even verified. <laughs> he doesn't have the views. I'm just like, I'm like, oh my, oh my God, are you guys like limiting me that much? Like, it's just like crazy. Yeah, no, for sure. Especially, uh, if you're making, you're making money. You say- you're making money. They don't want. They don't want rich guys. They don't want more rich guys. <laughs> uh, like, like keep these guys out. You know, they, they don't want. They don't want that. They don't want like people like me to disrupt stuff and say like ri- ridiculous truths. You know. Yeah. But, no. Especially with crypto, right? They want to remain in control to regulate what they want to push the ads for you to pay for this stuff. Uh, I mean, if you see on Facebook pages, they cut down so like extremely is because um, they need to regularly push ads. There's money for them in that and. If they can remain in control of that, they remain in control of what decisions you make, what what you want to buy, what ads they show you. Um, I mean, I don't want to like sit here and bash it, like because it is an important tool as well. And for sure, um, no, you still have criticism on products. You know, I think I I, I think it's a, I think it's a true criticism. I think they need to listen to people like us, or they're gonna have no one using it. Like I, that's what I was wondering mm-hmm. about Twitter. It's like I, I can't even use a Twitter. Like they they like banned me from even doing that. To where like. I think about that in like, like Twitter in like five years or maybe now it's just gonna be like no funny people like allowed to be even be on there. So it's just like people crying about politics constantly or something, you know, it's just yeah. like, <laughs> I mean, they have to like do some crowd control, man. Like, like they're limiting guys like you. It was like, if I had a social media thing, guys like you were creating growth. Yeah. You have like half a million people. You're, you're pushing art. I'm cool with that. You know, uh, yeah. you're pushing like, like, I don't know a lot of things that people that have money don't want, like decentralized money and stuff like that. Oh, I mean, they, yeah. they, I mean, I can see why they would see you as a threat, but I mean, I think like, they need guys like social media needs guys like you to fucking even exist, man. You know? Oh no, for sure. I mean, they not just like me, but everyone in general, right? If they don't have the public, public masses, then they're, they're nothing. They're just another app. It's just like, yeah. but uh, I, I do see like being decentralized as being important, but it can't get out of hand real fast, right? Like there should be some sort of regulation, but I mean, it, it it's really hard. It's really hard to, but, what re- what type of regulation is needed? Because at the same time, you don't want like all these porn images popping out like out of nowhere or like they're yeah, like somebody worse to take over. You know, <laughs> like that's yeah. what I always like, that's what I always worry. It's like oh man, like our institutions sold us out. Let's, let's let's create something new, and then like and they're like oh fuck, these guys are even worse than the institutions that sold us out. You know, that's kind of what I worry about like a little bit with like like digital currency as well. But I mean, I think it's useful. I think it's smart. I think it's cool. I mean, I think it's. I think a lot of things. I think it's the future. I mean, so clearly, everyone is going to have to get on board at some point, regardless. Yeah. But I think, but it. But at the same time, I'm like they like pushed it like this is like the this is like anonymous currency. Well, like like, like but I think that's what cash is. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like, like like paper exchanges are way more anonymous than like digital currency with IP addresses and all. It's like it's just so it's just so weird. I wonder. I just worry about like the like future tyrants and. Whatever else, that's all I really worry about. Like anything oh, else. Oh no, like- for sure. Like just look at all the scams have been going up like insane just because it's a new it's a new space. There's new opportunities. It's decentralized now. People are more uh like it's open there, right? They're their own bank, so they're more. Yeah, if you okay. get robbed, it's like you're out of it, kind of like. It's a new wild west. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Exciting I mean, um, again, you know, it makes the internet <laughs> exciting again. It's got boring. Because people are leaving these like like institutions like I mean like like Instagram and Facebook and Google and stuff because mm-hmm. people like lost trust in them like uh be it like politics or be it like like personal expression or be it like business like be it, I mean there's so many different layers of it. 
So I think you, I mean, you may be on to something. You may be like one of the richest dudes of all time. If you get, <laughs> if you get out of all this early, man, you know, it's like, cause like, uh, I mean, I can only imagine what it's like, what digital land is going to be worth. Like when there is none, you know? Oh, do I think digital land right now, like if, anyone can invest in it. It's like investing into Bitcoin when it came out. Like, uh, I think it's growing, it's got grow insanely. And like, I, if, if anyone could get into it right now, if you could buy land, like I would suggest try for it. I, I, I've been bidding nonstop because I feel like that's the future of advertising and marketing. Um, and the internet is, it's just a new way to socialize and for people to have fun exploring the internet in a way. Uh, yeah. so yeah, if you could get your hands on some land, like even the cheapest one would do great, especially on some of these bigger platforms like Sandbox or how much Essential is the cheapest land. one? Uh, on average, I mean, guess wise, I know you're not going to be exact. Uh, well, it's, it's kind of hard cause right now you're buying it on the second market. So if, uh, if you could get it off someone that's just trying to quickly flip it, I would say like 15,000, maybe like hmm. you might be able to get something cheaper, but in two months, like that's going to be like times five so don't yeah, see it yeah. as like i gotta drop 15 grand it's more like an investment or even a, you could rent out the land to these brands that get in later that didn't get a chance to like jump in early and that's, that's what i was thinking yeah how long is like pepsi in the pharmaceutical industry owns every inch of this, <laughs> the digital land it was like but no guys like you're i mean you got a real chance to do a lot of cool stuff man i mean that's like uh I mean, that's, it's, I mean, it's crazy. It's like interesting again, man. It's not just, you know, it's like how the internet was like in the nineties that it's like, like yeah. lured to it. Like, oh man, this is fun. Like, it hasn't been fun in like five years probably. You know? <laughs> like, you know, but this is, this whole, like, I'm kind of slowly learning about all this stuff. I mean, you're, you're already in it. You probably, you're already like, oh, dude, I, it's, I got, like it's so new. Already. It's so new. Like, I feel like I'm learning every day. Every day I find something new too. I'm like, I feel yeah. like it's new for everyone. Like, even for me, I try to, we have a, on my discord, I, we try to, uh just keep up with what's going on and we tell everyone that's on there like invest in land and do this like we try to give some advice as far as that like just because i feel like in this space it's 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 important to get people that are in it like just in it and learn faster it's not about like it's all about me and i feel like this space should be about like let's let's bring us all in together and like that's what i'm telling you like if you have a chance right now get in get some land uh, even if you don't have a brand, like y- you could utilize that for other brands to um, make some profit. Like <laughs> it's a That's good chance for everyone to get in. So yeah, yeah, it's interesting. It's like the beginning is still like a, like a lot of these are probably worth like millions of dollars later and stuff. I could see that yeah. almost like I mean that's that's why they're all gonna be owned by like like literally Pepsi probably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like Pepsi's gonna come in and own all those in five years. Yeah, dude, not even five years. I would say like by next year. Uh, my guy got a. Um, yeah, yeah he got like six plots of land for like 1000 each. And that was like, that was like a month ago, I think two months ago. And now they're like 15 to 20,000 each that that itself is a flip immediately. So I, I, I really strongly suggest if anyone could get it, get in there and yeah, try to get, get some land. <laughs> That's crazy to think about. I, I wouldn't even say five years. I honestly, by one year, this is going to be, Look at Facebook. They're already changing their whole brand to meta because they yeah. know how one, they want to keep away all this privacy issues They're, I wouldn't say they're. I thought about that. Yeah. That's a huge distraction. Yeah. They're like, no, we're going to go online all the time. We're like, we don't commit crimes. <laughs> you know, yeah, I thought man. about that for sure, dude. That's a good point. But that's why I think it's important for people to get in the other metaverses that are truly decentralized. I don't want to shit on like other big ones right now too much, but look into the ones that are truly decentralized, like Sandbox, the Central Land, the ones that are, are coming up that, I mean, Meta, I feel that's when the masses are going to start rolling in. But by that time, it might be a little bit obviously regulated, not decentralized and still under Facebook, which is not Meta, but they don't want you to know that. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, they're trying to figure out the next platform that could spy on us all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like basically trying to be in on the up and up. No, it's crazy. He's like, uh, yeah, who knows who's going to win this? I mean, there could, there could be like like a, a bunch of these or there could be like three of them or could be like one of them that's big. I mean, who knows how it's going to go? You know, it's like kind of mm-hmm. interesting. Like, it's a weird I time. mean, I, I kind of see them as being like Chrome or Firefox and Internet Explorer. Like you yeah, there's going to be a dominant one. There, there's got to be multiple ones. I feel like there won't be just one that 
that like Facebook Meta, even though that one will be big, is because it brings it it brings in a lot of people that are just not in the space yet, right? But I, I feel like there's gonna be a lot, and it, it it'll be good to like diversify and get into a few different ones. So cool, cool. Well, dude, um, thanks, man. Like, uh, look up Alex. Like, uh, his Instagram is probably on the screen at this point, and I already edited this. Um, uh, so, so follow him on Instagram, look up his art. I mean, I appreciate it, man. Like, uh, thanks for like kind of dumbing down everything and also just like sharing your art and stuff, man. Like, yeah, yeah, a bunch of cool shit going on, man. I hope you keep killing it, dude. Like, honestly. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Dude, likewise, man. Without amazing sponsors like Misguided Spirits, the Anthony Rogers Show, well, it wouldn't exist. So go to misguided-spirits.com, link in the description, and check out some of their awesome products. You can get some working man whiskey or some white crook vodka or some grown man gin. Uh, do yourself a favor and stock up. So this song is on the new record. It's called No One's Gonna Break This Heart. And then again, in parentheses, because uh, we all uh, we all do the same things, really, in relationships. When we get our heart broken, we say we're never going to get back with somebody or we're never going to do that again. And why would it be worth it? And yet we always find a way to um, for the heart to uh, be pulled in by another's magnet. And um, and that's essentially what the song's about. So here it is. No one's going to break this heart again. A part of you is lost and never found When love lifts you, then it lets you down Suffering reality, you feel the weight of gravity It grabs you and it pulls you to the ground And all the voices echo in your head The resolutions you had left for dead once again your heart it breaks you always make the same mistakes expecting something different in the end and no one's gonna break this heart again no one's ever gonna get close again there's never gonna be a reason to pretend there's never gonna be another bitter end until this heart of glass is a heart of stone Buried out there somewhere in the great unknown A solitary diamond to be left alone And no one's gonna break this heart Whoa, whoa Everything seems so intertwined The friends you had in common left behind The nights are getting longer The desperation stronger You're looking for some words, something in kind A part of you that you thought slipped away Comes alive to live another day And when it's unexpected The heart is resurrected and here we are meeting half the way And no one's gonna break this heart again No one's ever gonna get close again There's never gonna be a reason to pretend There's never gonna be another bitter end Until this heart of glass is a heart of stone Buried out there somewhere in the great unknown A solitary diamond to be left alone And no one's gonna break this heart Whoa. No one's gonna break this heart again No one's ever gonna get close again There's never gonna be a reason to pretend There's never gonna be another bitter end 
And now this heart of glass is a heart of stone A solitary diamond from the great unknown It's brighter than the world has ever known And no one's gonna break this heart